it's Friday. Right, so it's the end of another week. Um, I'm hopefully going to finish this today. So I thought I'd take the opportunity and use this painting to show you how I paint a Highland Cow. Okay, so this is a painting that I'm working on in between commissions. Um, this guy here, for anyone who doesn't know, is a comic book character from a comic called The Dandy. Um, he's called Desperate Dan. The Dandy has been around since 1937, I believe. Um, so it's been around a very long time. And Dan is the main character uh, from that comic. Um, I don't think he's the oldest. I believe a cat called Corky the Cat is actually the oldest character from it. I think Dan was perhaps introduced a little bit later. I'm, I'm not 100% not sure on that. But certainly Dan has been in that comic for at least 40 years anyway, I mean I'm 41 so, and I remember buying this comic as a kid and he was in it then so he's been around a long time and is the sort of main character from it. His character is kind of an archetypal Texas cowboy, his favourite food is cow pie which when you see it in the comic is a sort of steak pie with two big horns sticking out either side of it. So logic kind of dictated to me that this guy is kind of synonymous with the area where I live. Um, and Highland Cow, married up with that cow pie. There you go, got a painting. Um, this cow here, it's not going to be a sort of hyper realistic cow, it's not going to have a massive amount of detail. It will be a sort of not a cartoon cow, but not photorealistic, kind of somewhere in between. But it will be enough to, to give anyone who's kind of starting out painting cows or wants to try painting cows, um, it will give you a good enough base. Um, to work off and adapt your own style and your own abilities too. Okay, so as you can see, I've loosely painted the cow in just using some black acrylic. Um, it was sketched in using a 6H pencil, but because that's so light um, against a reasonably dark background like this, it's very difficult for it to show up on camera unless I go kind of really in close here. You can see some of the lines where I've sketched it in. Uh, but as soon as you come out they just they disappear so for the purpose of filming this I've done it in the black this is kind of how I would do it anyway um, I would draw the cow out and then I would start with my dark colours so the blacks, the very very dark browns I would start with them and then build up to the lighter layers so what I'm doing at the stage I'm at just now is I've got most of my the areas that are going to be in real deep shadow so the black colour I've done all them, or most of them, again this is something I may, I can chop and change, I can go back and forth as I go, but generally speaking, that's it done. I'm now starting on Burnt Umber to kind of go into the, the next grade up of colour if that makes sense, and essentially all I'll do is keep building that up and building that up until I get to the top layer, which is getting into your very very light highlights, which I will use a a buff titanium colour and even white um, in, some, in some circumstances depending on how the cow is going to look. One of the great things with cows is they're quite easy to do. They're quite easy to get wrong as well but they are quite easy to do in the sense that you, your drawing skills don't have to be that accurate. Um, you know because of the hair and the, the way that it flows it doesn't have to look exactly like your reference picture. Unless, of course, it's someone's pet cow, then that's a different story altogether. But um, just in general, to do a cow, when it has long hair like that, you can be quite free with it. You don't have to be that precise. So they're quite a good exercise to work on. And they're quite fun to do, because you can just kind of chop and change it as you go. The only real thing that has any, I suppose, definition is the nose. Um, a lot of people seem to struggle with the nose for some reason. It's have quite a basic shape, the cow's nose, and this applies to any breed really. It's kind of a, a sort of offset wrecked up, or a, is it a rhomboid, I think you call it. Um, kind of goes along like this, and then down at an angle here, straight across for the mouth, and then back up there. Now that's your basic shape that you would work off of. Obviously you have your, your indent coming down here. Some cows have a kind of indentation in the middle here. Um, it's not a, it's not an actual line like you would see on a, on a dog or a cat's nose but it's just a kind of it's like the surface kind of goes in at an angle and then comes back out again 
and it creates this kind of shadow line. Some have it, some don't. It's, it's, again, it's not a breed specific thing. I've seen two Highland cows standing next to one another. One has it, one doesn't. I suppose it's probably just a difference like we get with humans. Um, but that is, that is basically how a nose is done. You kind of have this very basic shape and then you're just kind of adjusting the mouth around it. And remember that you're, the nose at the edges here curves away. It goes round, so you want to make sure that your colour suits that and you get the shadows and the highlights in properly to make that stand out. Because that's something that I see a lot of people make a mistake with. They do a nose and it looks very, very flat. Your main highlight points usually, and this is kind of maybe seven times out of ten, your main highlight points on a cow's nose are just above here, just above the nostril area. So you'll have a couple of highlights, one there and one there. You sometimes have a highlight just coming across the middle here as well. And you'll have little highlights just in at the bottom as well, just in around there. That's generally, again it depends on the light source when your, your photographs taken, your reference image, but that is I suppose a rule of thumb as it were. Here is my cheap ass palette. I do actually have a proper artist palette, I just never use it. Um, I tend to use scrap pieces of paper just to fling paint on um, because when I finish with them, I can just screw it up and throw it in the bin and that's it, forgotten about. I don't have to clean anything. Um, I've got absolutely manky paint water here and a brush. Now, the colours that I've used so far I've got black, titanium white, and burnt umber. Sorry, raw umber. I actually thought it was burnt umber it was supposed to be, but it's not, it's actually raw umber. That there, that's raw umber, it's not burnt umber at all, I'm talking shite. Um, the colours I'll generally use, again it depends on the cow, um, some have a more orange colour to them, some have a more uh, sort of neutral, light brownish, getting into a kind of blondy colour, and then of course you've got the cows that are so blonde they're damn near white. So your colour options, the most colours that I will use on a cow, if it was something that was going to be sort of really hyper realistic, you'd be looking at raw umber, burnt umber, deep yellow, um, this one is whale, what's that one, transparent yellow, there would be cadmium orange in there as well, titanium white, they would also be buff titanium and Naples yellow. They would be the main colours that I would go to. Again, you can kind of swap that up as you go and just mix variations of that. You know, adding adding white to your to your raw umber just to give another tone. Um, but that is the, the sort of basic colours that I would use um, on a Highland cow that was um, a sort of photorealistic. You know, doing every single every single colour in it. Um, to do a kind of basic one, to be honest, you could probably get away with uh, burnt umber, titanium white, black, and cadmium orange. That would probably see you okay to do a pretty reasonable, reasonable standard of a cow. Let's get cracking. Um, okay, I've got some raw umber on my brush here. The type of brush you use is entirely up to yourself. It's personal preference. That's the type of brush that I'm using there. Kind of has that chisel edge to it. Um, I do put quite a lot of paint on it. I mean, some artists would look at that and go, that's bloody ridiculous, but it's how I work. It works for me. Um, this is kind of my sec the sort of second darkest colour, as it were, in, 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 in the list of colours that I'm going to do on this cow. So that's going to go near to my black, and I'm going to kind of work it over the black as well. Now, again, if you make any mistakes at this point, you can go back over with the black and sort it. It's not, not the end of the world. And you just kind of loosely go in I have my, my reference photograph is just off camera, so I'm not doing this um, straight out of my head. I'm kind of I'm not very good at that. Never have been very good at drawing from my mind. And again, with the ears, because this area of the ear here, this is going to be where your lightest part is, and you're going to have some hair coming over that that's going to be lighter, and you've got the dark area underneath. It's all just about layering. Painting cows are like ogres and onions. It's all layers. I see it's just very loose. Very rough. 
there's no there's no real right way or wrong way I've just found this to be easier it works for me it may not work for you it's just a case of you finding what what does work you can try this if it doesn't work you can tell me I'm full of shit and move on to something else and try another method now a wee tip put some water on your brush and this will allow you to kind of blend in your colour with acrylic it's just it's a fast method of just kind of loosely blending it in just to water it down but be careful don't water it down too much because you'll end up with runs coming all over the place that's happened to me quite a lot Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go over and do all my raw umber layer and then I'll come back and start on the next layer. Right, so that's just loosely done with the burnt umber, as you can see there. Now most of the nose will end up getting covered with a sort of buff titanium and a little bit of cadmium red um, added into it. We'll, we'll see that as we progress. But uh, this is just to give you an idea of how it's looking. And you can see kind of where your, your colours and your brush strokes need to be. Next layer. Here um, is just a little bit of the burnt umber mixed in with some white and effectively what I'm doing is these areas that I've left I'm just kind of filling these in again very loosely and if I feel like just kind of adding a hair here there or everywhere I'll just do that as I go. So it's very loose, very kind of free. No real plan as such. The only plan with this really is to just make it look like a cow. That's it. I don't have a, a set regime or anything like that. Just go with it. Uh, 
and I suppose it's doing things like this that kind of you can come across your own style. Style's a very, very difficult thing to to come up with, I have to say. And I think anyone who paints will agree with that. Very, very difficult. But sometimes it just happens by complete accident. One of the good things you might see with mixing your acrylic, so adding white to it, is not to mix it fully, is to kind of leave it rough. So when you're, that's what I tend to pull some of the paint in and then just a little bit of white and just kind of leave it like that. See how that's got a kind of marbled effect? Because when you paint onto your canvas, you'll get the same effect and that will add dark and highlight for you already so you're not actually having to kind of go over it it's just another wee thing that, that adds a little bit of depth to, to what you're doing and another thing is when you start to run out of paint use that to your advantage because you'll kind of fade the hair away and again give it that kind of natural sort of almost transparent look to it that you kind of get with sort of wispy natural fibres. You can see there how that's starting to build up already. We'll carry on with this colour and again come back when we're done with it. Colour. Okay, so what I've got here is a little vermilion, some buff titanium and some of my burnt umber, which is just kind of mixed together. And here we go, another layer, layers! Now hopefully you're getting some idea of what I'm trying to do here. Let me know if you are. Of course, if you have any questions, just pop them down below and I'll do my best to, to answer them for you. I try to answer them all as quickly as possible as well. With the way of the world these days, everybody wants an instant response, so I try to give it. But you see what I'm doing here is what, I'm, what I was saying earlier about a lot of your work will be painted over but it will still kind of show through kind of what's happening here. Now this would be the same process, if I was doing a photorealistic cow, it would be exactly the same process, except I would carry it on. Um, this cow will finish at a certain level and that'll be it done. To start off a photorealistic cow or a hyperrealistic cow, whatever word you want to use, um, I would do exactly the same process, but it would just be, every layer would take a lot longer to do. That's really all it is. Hyperrealism isn't. I don't feel it's that difficult to do. Um, it's just very time-consuming and very difficult to to charge for or to get your money back. Or your your kind of labour that you would put into it. You know, I'm not going to sell a painting that took me 120 hours to paint for 600 pounds. It's just not going to happen. But sometimes that's the kind of value that you're working at, you know, once you get over a thousand pound, you're kind of going into another 
um, another group of buyers, essentially. I find round about 500 for something even this size, which is a meter by a meter. 500 kind of seems to be about the limit for the average person. They will spend that. Any more than that, they kind of have a wee think, and it's maybe they're not necessarily going to do it unless they really, really love it. But that's this colour going down. And again, as you'll see, any of the areas from the background of the canvas that haven't actually been covered, that is essentially what I'm going over. And I'm kind of paying attention to any sort of areas that will be kind of high spots. So, like I said, this area here, this is where you're going to have a, a very light, your light's going to hit that directly. So that's going to be a lot lighter. So just kind of paying a little bit more attention to that. Not a great deal, but just a little bit just now. Essentially, it's to kind of guide you later on in the painting. The, the more work you do now, the easier it becomes later on. And the less hair you'll have to pull out of your head. And if you see there, I've got very, very little paint on this brush. But I'm using it to drag that over the dark area to give it that kind of wispiness that it has. I kind of think that a lot of a lot of things you can paint aren't actually difficult. You just make it difficult for yourself. Um, overthinking it for one thing. Um, a lot of people are very very guilty of that. Um, you know, try not to. One of the hardest things with painting or drawing or any kind of art is knowing when to walk away before you overwork something. It's very easy to do. I you know I'm still very susceptible to it even now. So it's not. It's not something that you just go through as a beginner or as an amateur, it happens to everybody. Even some of the most seasoned professionals. Just kind of got to know and say, right, that's, I'm going to finish it there and be happy with it. And it's quite difficult to be happy with your own work because needless to say, we're all, all our own worst critics. And you're always going to look at things and say, well, I could have changed this, I could have done that better. Ultimately, is your customer happy with it? That's what you want to... That's the only thing you want to worry about. As long as your customer's happy, it's all that matters. I hope this is showing up okay. Things like this will just block all this in. And out later on. Now everybody has their own preference what kind of brush. As I say, this is the type of brush that I use more often than not. Um, I will sometimes use a flatter head brush like that. Or who's the other one? It's here somewhere. I had it. There we go. There's that one as well, which is just slightly wider. I find these type of brushes to be very good for doing cows. Very handy. So let's get on with the nose um, before I start. I actually started doing some of the highlights and forgot about the nose. So let's get on with the nose and 
show you how that's done. Now I basically just use this buff titanium as a base for it. Just kind of fill in um, where I want to go. And again, this is just very loose. We're just kind of blocking in the colours here. One thing, if you have any, well, I remember, if you have any problems actually sketching out your cow or drawing from, apologies for that bing, that's what I get for leaving my Wi-Fi on while I'm doing this. Um, another little tip is while you have, you can tape your reference image to your canvas, just using some masking tape, tape it to your canvas and as you're drawing, use your finger and follow the lines. So actually point at the area that you're drawing and that will focus your eye on it. Try it out if you've not done it. Let me know how you get on. Okay, one nose. That's just the base of it done. We'll get on to the next colours. Okay, so what I've now done is I've mixed some cadmium red, I had to look at the bottle there, sorry, uh, with the buff titanium just to give this kind of light, pinky, sort of fleshy tone. If you don't have cadmium red, any kind of red will do it. It's not. I don't get too hung up on colours and you know having the exact right ones because let's be honest, you can have a very basic set of colours and just mix them. Easy as that, you know. It's not. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be expensive. You can do it cheap. Basic set of colours and just mix them. A lot of airbrushers that I see are obsessed with having every colour of airbrush paint that is out there and airbrush paint, airbrush specific paint anyway that comes in small bottles is extremely expensive um, for what it is, you know, for what you get. Very small bottles are sort of 10-15 pounds a pop and you know if you were to have every colour out there you'd spend thousands of pounds easily without even breaking a sweat um, so yeah I, I find it kind of ridiculous when you can pick up base coat from an auto body paint store and just mix your own colours simple as that again a lot of people like to, to over complicate things and make it difficult for themselves I think I'm sure they do I can't figure out any other reason for it anyway adding that and again this is just kind of loose you know it's not not overly precise and as you see I'm just going over the black there with very little paint on my brush and that gives that kind of transparent effect you can see the black through it you can see the shadow through it it's just enough we'll crack on with this and finish the nose off 
here is just taking some of the burnt umber and stuck it in with my mix of my cadmium red and buff titanium and we're just going to go in and do this area in here because this area is kind of darker again this is just giving you kind of basic structure for your nose you kind of work off of this once you've got this done you can add your finer details to it doesn't have to be completely precise. Apologies if the camera's wandering off here, I'm trying to hold it and paint at the same time, which as you can see I'm not, not very good at. But that's kind of your base there for your nose. It's not difficult. And as I was saying before, your highlight points, I'm just going to show you this just now, I'll probably Sort it out. I'm just going to put some titanium white on my brush here and I'll just show you what I mean by highlight points. Have them in here like that there. Okay, I think it's not not great. I need to kind of straighten this out a bit, I think. But these are kind of highlight areas there. And just in here. Kind of fade it off just like that. See, and there's another wee highlight just in here. And just kind of blend it out like that. That's just, like I say, very loose, very rough, just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. And again, you'll have kind of highlight just on this edge here, and a little one. This is just from this particular reference photo that I'm working on, but that's the kind of idea there to let you see. When you want to blend your acrylic, just put a little bit of water on your brush and just kind of go over the same area and kind of blend it in, just like that. And remember your acrylic will always dry darker than it is wet. The nose is just up here and you go from a sort of darker colour into this light highlight. So you're just putting some very, very light, very fine highlights in here. There's always going to be this kind of dark area just here. Highlight that a bit by bringing that around. This kind of dark area in here, that's always going to be there. That's one thing that's quite consistent with the nose area on a cow. But again, this is something, I'll kind of fix this up as I go, but this is just a basic idea of where you should be with it. And I'm just using straight buff titanium here to do my kind of, I'm going to make this quite a light, a light cow, I think. I don't know, I might change my mind. But when you're doing your highlights, essentially if you take this area here, the width of this brush, you're really just doing the outer edge, because that's where your highlights are going to be. So effectively, the further on you come with your painting, the less painting you should actually be doing. Because you're just adding small sections. And again, you can see here I'm being quite loose with that. No exact plan, but you can see how that's building up there. At least I hope you can. I do have far better filming equipment, I just can't be arsed using it. I ain't gonna lie. So 
I say this style is not meant to be realistic in any way. It's just kind of loose. You can kind of have fun with it. It's the kind of thing you can paint and just sort of sort of relax doing it. To a degree. Now when I'm using this brush I actually use it pointy end, touching the canvas, and just kind of dragging it down. Sometimes run it the other way, but it'll all just depend on what I'm doing and how I'm feeling. see already some of the areas I painted earlier are starting to dry so they're starting to go a bit darker so just remember that when you paint with acrylic is it will dry darker the advantage is that it obviously is it dries very very fast so you can see that effect really quick so you can correct it if need be quickly as well okay so hopefully you can see what I'm doing there and how that's been building up I'll carry on and finish this layer and then we'll come back and do what essentially will be the final layer whether or not the finished product you see on this will be what I finish with I don't know um, it should be uh, wouldn't be a very realistic tutorial if it wasn't but uh, we'll see I'm now going on to the final layer which is just pure titanium white I've kind of watered it down just a little Going in with that just very, very light. This is the point where you've got to be careful that you don't overdo it because you do too much of this and you will ruin it. But you won't ruin it, you'll you'll just create more work for yourself. It's easily fixed. Everything everything in painting is fixable. So never worry too much about screwing something up because you can fix it it's just how you fix it and mistakes happen to everyone absolutely everybody makes mistakes so don't let anyone tell you otherwise because they're lying All you really need to remember when doing your highlights is to have them at the far edge of what you're doing. And it'll come with experience, you'll learn kind of the flow of the hair, um, what points, you won't have to think about it too much. And you'll probably have to do this stage maybe two or three times because you'll find as we see here what was once bright white has kind of dried in a bit so it's faded quite a, quite a lot so again you'll just go back over that and when you go back over it you'll go back over it just with pure paint you won't actually put any you won't dilute it at all Again, with doing your highlights, it's really just a case of paying attention to your reference image. 
look at it and see where you need to be and just follow it. If you can paint one from your head, great, good luck to you. I've never really been any good at drawing or painting anything directly from my mind. I've always got to have something to look at to go with it. See there, roughly how it's going. I'll put my highlight on the eye while I'm doing this. Give it a bit of life. There you go, that's all it takes, just a wee highlight. Give it a bit of life. That is how it's done. As you can see, I mean, this has really just been a couple of hours at this. It's not been that long between obviously trying to film it and paint it and answer emails and all the usual. Uh, the usual requirements of running this bloody business. And you want to do very fine here, just kind of take the brush very lightly and run it down and you'll get kind of finer hairs. It's not something you need to spend hours and hours doing every individual hair. This again, this is just something that you will get the hang of with practice. Okay, don't worry about it the first time around. The more you do it, the better you'll become. You'll know exactly where you need to be. manage it no problem. There you go. That's it more or less done. Obviously I've just got kind of bits of the nose to tidy up, um, the chin area down here as well. Um, but we'll come back to that in just, just a bit. Okay so I am going to call this pretty much done that's us finished as you can see we've done this sort of final layer with the white highlights um, and around the chin area it's not supposed to be a you know a fully realistic cow I wanted this to kind of have a, a cartoony look to it because obviously it's next to a comic character you know doing a very real cow next to that wouldn't wouldn't necessarily work but I wanted to have an element of realism um, Hence the hair, I've gone a bit more detailed with that. And you can see, if you look close, you can see how we've progressed with it. You have your black in there, which is what we started with. And you're going into your burnt umber, your raw umber, burnt umbers, your mix of those colours with a little bit of white, um, into your buff titanium, and then into the, the pure titanium white. And just building that up in layers to give you a decent looking cow. And that's really just how simple it is. Um, you, you can go a stage further and you know add different hues and really build it up. But the process is basically the same, no matter what you're doing. It's all a case of just starting dark and building your layers up to the whitest of highlights. So that is it done, so I'll be going up for sale at the venue in Perth, um, the next couple of days I'll get that taken down, but that's it finished. 
Okay, so that's cow done, more or less anyway. I'll probably go over it again um, at some point tomorrow, um, just with kind of fresh eyes, give it another once over. If there's anything I want to change or adjust, um, then I'll do that. But that is it, basically finished. Ready to get out of here, get it on a pub wall and get it sold. Um, I hope that tutorial helps a little bit. It's not that in depth, it's kind of quick and rushed because obviously I'm trying to work at the same time and I have other stuff sitting around here that I need to get done. Uh, it's probably going to be uh, an all nighter shift tonight by the looks of it. Um, so I hope that helps. If you have any questions at all, just pop them down below and I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as possible for you. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all later.